Boom, we're back, and we have Ben Gee because we have the return of the king, Bath Salts Ben versus Gabe, the Purple Belt. Let's see how Gabe does with the master. It doesn't take long before Gabe gets the takedown, but Ben has a quick attack ready for Gabe. He goes for a Kamar right over the wrist, and oh my god, he just tapped out a Purple Belt right away. Let's replay this one. He goes to the Kamar. He goes over the injured hand for the wrist attack, and he gets Gabe with a little submission. Now, I'm not sure if Gabe's hand is hurt other than he has a clear amount of tape over it. I'm not sure what has happened, but Ben got the submission, and he's feeling pretty good. Perfect. Ben is just leveled up because he finally got to tap a Purple Belt, but let's remember one thing. Gabe is a pretty tough guy. He's always willing to go, and he has a lot of wrestling experience, so the tide is going to quickly turn going into this next round. Gabe hasn't been on the channel before, but he's pretty feisty in his purple belt, and he's been one for about a year. He also has some good wrestling experience, so let's see how he does with Ben. He's immediately looking to tie up, and he wants to control Ben, and he snaps him down to meet Hades. Ben is completely fine with going down to the underworld because he draws his energy from two things. One, bath salts, and two, Hades himself. He's going to use his energy to do an interesting role where he falls to his side, and he earns himself a little duck quack for that role because he put himself in a worse position by going for this. Gabe is working behind Ben, and now he's looking for a half Nelson, and it's putting out a wrestling clinic on Ben. Gabe has to get some revenge on Ben, so expect to see a lot of wrestling control from Gabe. If you expect Ben just to get wrestled down by Gabe, you are completely wrong. Instead, expect a lot of useless energy to be spent from him, and Gabe is now looking to step over the head. Stepping over the head is great if you want to go for Kimuras, Americanas, Armlocks, etc., but instead, Ben has different plans. Gabe is looking to expel the evil from Ben, and Ben arches as high as he can with his back because he refuses to let the devil out of him. Look at the expression on Ben's face. He refuses to succumb come to this submission. Instead, he brings his hand in. He's going to try and push Gabe's leg off of him to get off of his face so everybody can see his wonderful facial expressions. And Gabe is going to have to give up on the submission because evil has prevailed. However, he grabs the head and gets a quack. If you like to grab the head on bottom like Ben does, you should probably change your game a little bit. That's not the best way to get out of positions, and it really is just setting yourself up for a submission. Now, the great thing about Ben is that he is always scrambling. He's looking to grab Gabe's leg. It's completely useless. Nothing is working here. But but he is scrambling out to the front head position. Gabe, however, being the wrestler, is completely fine working Ben in the front head. This also is a nice way to keep Ben calm, try and release some of his energy, and to control him and to use his energy against him. Now, quick, for my question of the day so we can get this out of the way, if you were to roll with Ben, what would you do to try and stop him? We already saw that Kimuras don't work, so what would be your attack? Would you try and go for a guillotine or something else? Let me know in the comments below. Ben actually isn't doing that bad in this front head defense position. He's not too worried about the choke, but he's kept a strong base this entire time. Time, even when Gabe keeps going for takedowns and he's going for other attacks. So that's some solid defense from Ben, but also some solid pressure from Gabe, because it takes a lot of energy to keep Ben off of you, and he's done a nice job about staying calm and trying to use Ben's energy against him. But as is tradition, Ben reaches back, grabs the head, earns another quack, because that is his natural defense. Thankfully, Ben is slightly learning, and he lets go of the head, and Gabe is working towards his back. Gabe has some pretty good back control from his wrestling days, and it's also a different type of control, and we can see here from Ben, the struggle is real. He's not peeling the hands at all, he's just trying to stand up, he has a lot of anger in his face, and he slams back down to the mat to earn himself a quack. The quack is because he did not hand fight. You can't just stand up. You have to hand fight. Now he gets another quack here from another interesting role. As he puts himself in this position, he's locking up Gabe's head, and he's trying to lock his hand around his leg. I'm not really sure why. Gabe, however, is two steps ahead of him. That is the nice difference about seeing a purple belt with Ben instead of seeing a white belt with Ben. Now, we're in another Kimura attempt, and clearly, Gabe has not learned that Ben is untappable. If you guys answered earlier that you would try and tap Ben with whatever submission, you're wrong. You can't tap him. He has too much negative energy, and he will destroy you with it. Now, Gabe is starting to undress Ben a little bit. He's working some fancy gi work, which is interesting to see because we don't see a ton of gi on my channel. He brought the lapel around Ben's neck, and this is going to allow him to control Ben because he's still trying to tire this guy out. Unfortunately, that's not the answer either. You cannot tire Ben out. Now, pay attention to the facial expressions that we have from Ben. We can see here he's trying to evolve into a different type of human being from bath salts and negative energy. He's changing his form all the time, and Gabe is doing some slick gi control. Gabe has been a using this collar grip to maintain control and stay on top of Ben. He's working his leg over the head again, and Ben's going to put himself in a crucifix. I don't know why he decided to do this. He's going to try and arch his way out of here, but I don't think crucifying yourself is the way out. Now, I feel bad for both of their heads here because Ben rolls them. Gabe hits his head on the mat. Ben hits his head on the mat. But I guess the crucifix must have helped because he got out of that position until Gabe was able to maul him a little bit more by bringing the leg.
leg over and now working towards mount. Now something to note here is look at the composure from Gabe. It's nice that when you rank up, you have some light at the end of the tunnel where you can stay composed when you are rolling with somebody like Ben. Gabe is now establishing back control and this is a pretty good answer for Ben because back control with hooks in is a really easy spot to control someone assuming that you can maintain the position and you can keep your hooks in etc. We're going to see here how Ben does. His first attempt is to try and grab the head from the back. Gabe uses this arm against him so Ben can't use this. Ben shakes his head a little bit thinking I couldn't get him this time with the head grab it'll have to be the next time. I think flattening Ben out is a really good option here because it's hard to fight if you can't get off of your belly. I talk about it all the time where wrestlers are really good at controlling people because they can shove to your belly and you don't have any guard from your belly. However, Ben is unchokable. Gabe is bringing his left arm in. He's trying to punch across to get under the throat. Ben refuses for this to work on him. He's not even really hand fighting. He just won't get choked. Now, Gabe is doing a nice job of adding some pain into the role because he wants to get some revenge on Ben, but Ben is not going to get tapped. This is a really nice tilt from Gabe here. He tilts Ben out to the side so he can continue to just score on him endlessly, get the side control position, and Ben once again is locking up the head and bringing his hand into his own leg to try and secure a bottom head control position, I guess. The funny thing is that Ben has exposed himself in nearly every position we've seen today, but he's able to get out of every single position. He's not getting out in the correct way, so I don't recommend learning from him. Nonetheless, he's able to get out of these terrible spots and work into a different terrible spot. Now, from here, we get into a different head control. Ben is trying to wrap up the head with his legs. If he can't use his hands, he may as well use your legs to try. However, this is going to put him in a weird spot that I'm going to call 69 guard because Ben is going for a dick bump. Not the thing I would do on bottom in 69 guard, but if it doesn't work the first time, go for it again. Ben hits another dick bump, and this time he's able to move Gabe with his little appendage and get out of that position. Now, to everybody watching, this i think you should all be like gabe he's staying calm the whole time even if he tapped he still is staying composed and he's trying to work and get some good positions now ben is going to get a secret arm bar however it's on himself we're going to watch this one again because i don't know why anybody would try and arm bar themselves but he wraps up his own arm he starts compressing it and then i think he realizes wait that's my own pain i'm going to pull that out of there we also can see once again, Ben is a serial head grabber. He's grabbing the head in this position, not helping himself. And then he does some really questionable turns where he gives Gabe his back. He gives the hooks and he's going to try and roll out of this in a very interesting way with the face of chaos. He's spitting. Everything's coming out and the round is just about to end. Listen to Ben at this time. <laughs> That brings us to the end of the round of another great Ben roll. If you want awesome jiu-jitsu gear, check out my link in the description to get your own. Also, thank you all my current patrons and viewers. Ben will be back.